Last time we talked about the CompTIA Security Plus, we went through section 1.2, which covered the different kinds of attack types that happen in cybersecurity. So now we'll be going through section 1.3 and talking about different kinds of threat actor types and their attributes. Hi everybody, welcome to StudioSec. Thank you for watching. Like if this video is helpful. Comment down below if you've learned anything from this video and subscribe for more content. I'm very excited to continue to post this content for you and we're posting every week. In addition, be sure to follow me on Twitter. It's at secsec underscore studio. Tweet at me if you have anything you wanna learn about. Comment down below if you have a specific video idea that you'd like to see some content on, let me know and I'd be more than happy to put something together for you. Now, if you saw the previous Security Plus study guide video, we covered section 1.2, covering different kinds of attack types. Well, those come from somewhere, and today we're gonna to be talking about where those come from, like what kinds of threat actors there are, and we'll even talk about some of their attributes and why you know they might wanna be doing some of these kinds of things and what they might be doing to accomplish their goals. A, a thing generally to understand is that you could be going up, if you're on the blue team, against any one of these, and that could be, it could be anything from just a small petty cyber criminal to literally a department of a nation state's military. So, you know, the, the, the spectrum is pretty wide there, but don't worry, you know, we're gonna go through it here. Now, if you're setting this for the CompTIA Security Plus exam, again, this is section 1.3. These will be on the test, and this section actually makes up over 20% of your exam. So, and I'm gonna say this at the end as well, but threat actors, they can kind of cover more than one of these, and I'll explain that here in a moment, okay? But we're just gonna kind of break right in. So, of course, the first kind of threat actor we're gonna be looking at is script kitties. Now, what is a script kitty? That's a funny name, right? Right? Well, that is somebody that is taking code that's already been posted online and they're trying to run it for their own purposes, right? They aren't really, they don't really know how to create malware viruses. They don't really know how to do a lot of things or kind of you know, newer uh, to being an, a threat actor. And so they're taking things that they're finding online and trying to use them for their own purposes. They, ne they aren't necessarily the biggest threat act there, out there. Again, a lot of the code that they're pulling from might already have patches out there for it, but that doesn't mean sleep on the threat that script kitties can pose. They can still cause all kinds of problems for you, especially if you're not following the basics of cybersecurity practice, like having a good passphrase, you know, using passphrase managers, making sure that you're resisting social engineering attempts, et cetera, et cetera. Next is gonna be a hacktivist. Now a hacktivist is hacking not for money, not for power, but for a you know a particular message that they're trying to send, right? So they might do anything from like a defacement attack on a website, they might be taking a service down that maybe they find uh, to be disagreeable, right? So hacktivists, they're out there to send a message through what they're doing, whether that's for good or for bad, that's what they're doing, right? Organized crime, now organized crime, they're generally out there for money, right, for the most part. And they'll do so in a number of ways. They might do so by, you know, getting access to data or machine and then ransoming that out on the on the dark web. Uh, there are different kinds of auctions that might happen down there where people are selling access to machines or even data. Uh, they can do so with ransomware attacks, so they'll try to extort, you know, you or other individuals or organizations for money by saying, hey, you know, we've encrypted everything that you possess, now pay us this sum of money. So organized crime, they can be, uh, you know, definitely a threat and they're, you know, they are more sophisticated than your run-of-the-mill hacktivist or script kitty because they might be working in groups, you know, you might find you know, an organized, you know, it's organized crime, right? They're working in teams that might be, you know, trying to coordinate these kinds of attacks. Next, we have nation states or advanced persistent threats. All right, now this is where things can get really interesting. All right, is, you know, obviously, we intuitively know every country on the planet has some sort of intelligence community and every nation is trying to gather data. Well, they're going to gather data in cyberspace using hacking techniques. That's just a thing that happens. Well, obviously those are things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. So is it an organized crime group trying to attack my company or is it literally the military of Russia, right? Is it the GRU that's trying to break into your organization? And for them, you'd wanna look at a number of things you know what purpose are they trying to accomplish uh, what mission are they looking into what kind of access are they trying to gain so if you are an organization that may be 
works with the government in some kind of way, you work with the military in some kind of way, maybe you have some kind of, you know, advanced, you know, some kind of technology that might be of interest to, you know, other governments. They're probably, you know, advanced persistent threats are probably something you're gonna wanna really pay attention to in their tools, techniques, and procedures. They're not, for the most part, they aren't necessarily looking for money, they're looking for access and, and, and information. Sometimes they are looking for money. I mean, North Korea is one of those cases where they're looking for money, <laughs> right? Because they're very heavily sanctioned, they're very poor officially, right? And, and they're trying to find different ways that they can get money through criminal means. Next is gonna be insiders. And what that means is just people that work inside of an organization that are giving information or access to an outsider threat. So we another term for this would be insider threats. You may have had meetings or, or training in your organization about insider threats, things that they're out after, and, and the information that they're looking for. But insider threats, they might be a number of things. They may have been uh, radicalized by a particular group that's trying to get them to gain information or collect information to give to them or they might be a disgruntled employee that's looking to hurt the company it could be a number there could be a number of reasons why insider threats happen but it's very important for uh, your organization to catch those things to look for indicators of what of you know who might be the next insider threat now that might make you paranoid please do not be paranoid. You do not want to just distrust everybody. Trust that people are legit, but verify. Always trust, but verify. And next, of course, is gonna be competitors. Again, we'll use the technology analogy again. Let's say you have access to a particular kind of proprietary technology that you've been developing for a long time and another company wants access. It may not be legal, or, or let's say not even a company, another organization may want access. It may not necessarily be legal, but then again, none of this is. And if they can find a way that they believe uh, cannot be traced back to them, uh, which may or may not actually be realistic, they will try to gain that information by gaining unapproved access into your organization. So, you know, and they might be looking for a number of things, but it's probably gonna be some kind of data, right? So look at things that you have that your competitors do not have and think about, okay, well, how would they want or how would they get this data if they really wanted it? Now, we're gonna look at attributes of actors, right? Is it can be internal or external. We talked about insider threats. And this is kind of what I meant in the beginning that you might be getting combinations here where an insider threat could be associated with organized crime. Maybe you hired somebody that you did not realize was part of the mafia and they're going to start stealing things. That's, well, one that's crazy and I'm curious about your background checking practices. Wild. That can't, but that may or may not happen, right? An insider threat could be working with a competitor. Perhaps, you know, a nation state is putting an insider threat. So that's where internal or external means, right? They Are, are they inside your organization or are they outside of your organization? Um, th so that's something you really need to take a review of. Just because you have been attacked doesn't mean that that attack origin, well, that attack might have originated from outside, but it doesn't mean that there were some elements operating on the inside that could have assisted with progressing the attack. Next is levels of sophistication. And so I kind of talked about earlier how script kitties are probably not the biggest threat out in the wild, but your nation states absolutely are, right? And the reason for that is gonna be resources and funding. So your script kitties, Again, they're just randos on the internet trying to pull stuff from GitHub and fire it off and see if it sticks, right? Um, and if you're implementing good patching, if you have you know strong firewalls, you're implementing solid securities, you're probably not gonna have a problem when it comes to script kitties. Now, whenever it comes to a nation state, and they're recruiting some of the best and brightest that their country has to offer. They're giving them the best training available. They basically have a limitless budget because they're working for their country's government. You're probably gonna be dealing with a different kind of beast than you would a script kitty, especially whenever you put a bunch of, you know, these geniuses in a room and then you tell them, okay, you need to hack this organization, right? Now an organized crime would be somewhere, now an organized crime group would be somewhere in between, right? A nation state is gonna be probably your biggest threat and your script kitty is gonna be the lowest threat, but organized crime is gonna be somewhere in the middle. It could be an unsophisticated crime syndicate that's trying to hack you, or it could be a very well-funded, 
uh, organized crime. They may have some sort of support on the back end. If we look at all kinds of you know, groups out there that have some kind of proxy funding or they might be operating as a proxy for another government, that's a thing that can happen, right? And that is a thing that has happened. So just because it's organized crime doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be you know, a nation state, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be like a nation state in its sophistication. Now, we've already talked about resources and funding. Uh, the main thing to note here is just, you know, what kind of threat actors do you believe them to be? If they're hacktivists, then they probably won't have a ton of resources or funding. Not like if they were a nation state or an advanced persistent threat. Intent motivation. Now, remember a script kitty? They're just pulling stuff from online and trying to see if it works. So their motivation is probably not going to be there. They're not, you know, they'll probably throw a couple things at you and then bounce if they believe that they're not really getting anywhere. A hacktivist, they might be pretty motivated. They have an intent to send a message and they're going to send their message one way or another. Organized crime, they're out for money. They're probably going to be looking for, uh, you know, targets of opportunity, uh, you know, companies that are not really paying as much attention to security as others. And so they're going to be looking for your weaker targets that they can get a lot of money from. Nation states, I mean, they've got all kinds of intent and motivation. It just depends on what kind of information they're after. So if you have information that is particularly juicy, they'll probably be after you. Uh, now, if you're an organization that has incredible security, like, you know, you you are really knocking it out of the ballpark uh, when it comes to your, your organization's cybersecurity, and let's say maybe you don't have that much information that's really that interesting to them in the grand scheme of things, they'll probably not go crazy when trying to breach your company. Maybe they will because they're curious why you're knocking it out of the park cybersecurity wise. Like what are you really trying to protect here? But ultimately it's it's just in down to what are they intending to accomplish and how motivated are they to accomplishing that task. Now next is gonna be use of open source intelligence. Now here's the thing. If you, you can go on the internet and you can learn a lot of things. <laughs> right a lot of facts are out there on the internet that you can learn and that's information that you can use uh, when kind of creating a picture of the environment that you are in so open source intelligence is a very important thing from a defensive side but it's also very important from an offensive side so you know if, if you're let's say your script kitty is paying attention and maybe they have found out that there's been some kind of a, a controversy uh, about you know, maybe your company is not using the right kind of, of patching program, right? And you have some gaps in your security. Well, the script kitty, you know, might find the right malware to run that might get them access to your organization. And a lot of that comes down to Google dorking. Hey, comment down below if you don't know what Google dorking is, and I can make a video on Google dorking. Pretty crazy and interesting stuff. Uh, but anyway, that is one way. They're basically just summarized. They're very specific Google searches. But that's basically one way that you can collect open source intelligence is by you know creating these specific Google search uh, queries that might be able to pull up information that is on the internet that a company necess didn't necessarily you know, plan on being available out there. So with that, like this video if it was helpful. Comment down below if you wanna see a video on Google dorking or if you have anything else that you'd like me to make a video on, just let me know and I'll do my best to put something out for you. And subscribe for more content. I'm posting more content for Security Plus, but I'm also posting all kinds of other really cool content that I really want you to check out and be a part of, right? So, hey, join the subscribing list and and maybe once we hit the 500 subscriber challenge you can be a part of that and win a prize so like comment subscribe see you next time